Now, we will go to another situation because now the condition is becoming worse slowly, slowly. So on the seventh, eighth and ninth days are the periods where somebody succumbs yeah. because the situation now is going to be very bad. So first let us discuss the patient. Then we go to Matriya Medica. So as I told you, that patient starts coughing, bringing out phlegm, difficulty in breathing, heaviness in the chest, patient looks more toxic, fever becomes high, and then you get three things, respiratory failure, kidney failure, and multi-organ failure. Three things will happen one after another. That is very important. Three things can happen. So let us see now how best we can look at this kind of patients, you know, who presents to us with this situation. So I am again going to discuss now a little bit of a pneumonia type of picture. So and let us see what are the best things that we can have a look over here. So, in pneumonia, you will have some characteristic things. The first remedy that uh, comes to my mind yeah. but in this situation, what I want to discuss with you is uh, what should I say? Pneumonia related to COVID and not other pneumonias which I am going to discuss. So, this is very important that I only discuss. Let us take into the beginning part of the pneumonia and then the end part of pneumonia. So, let's see. Suppose I am discussing a case where the pneumonia is just beginning, yeah. okay. just started. My favorite remedy that has come so far in about 12, 10 to 12 patients of COVID is ferrum phosphoricum. Now, ferrum phosphoricum comes very close to aconite, but aconite is immediate and ferrum phos is after one or two days. So that's the difference. And characteristic thing that I see in ferrum phos is that it resembles phosphorus a lot. So once you start with ferrum phos, after a few days you will have to give phosphorus as the remedy. Basically you may see a little streak of blood in the sputum that they remove. That's very characteristic. In ferrum phos, you see redness. In ferrum phos, you see burning. Ferrum phos comes in a very early stage where you get a dry cough. A very dry cough that you will see in ferrum phos. Ferrum phos has got a hard cough. Mm -hmm. So, first thing is very important is that it has got a Hard cough. And hard, you mean loud? Hard loud means cough? It, it is very irritating to your ear. It is very irritating to our ear. That kind of coughing you will see in uh, ferrum phos. So that's another thing which is there. And, uh, if you inspire very deeply, the cough becomes much more worse in ferrum phos. So that's another thing. It's a very painful cough. That's another very characteristic. And it is worse in the morning after you wake up. So that's the thing about ferrum phos. Then, in the same period of ferrum phos, so let's see that the pneumonia has just... Uh, started, you will think of a remedy epicac, which has come very close. But epicac course is little slower, slower and a sluggish start. 
Usually, you will not find clear cut indication in the first day of epicac patient to give epicac. Now, right now, the weather in Europe is very cold, as far as I know. But in our India, it is not so cold. In India, we have got temperatures of 30. In Europe, I think so, spring has just started. This is what I feel. But still, European spring is much colder than our Indian weather. So this is a period of epicac when the temperature, you know, are becoming slightly warmer from the winter season. And then the person face is very hot and sweaty. So the best thing is to touch the face of the patient. And if you see it is hot, like when you put the dorsum of your hand like this. And it is hot and sweaty, and they are flushed with a high fever. Difference is that the belladonna pulse is bounding and full, and epicac pulse is never bounding, but it is full. So when you put your hand, there is no bounding. Can you explain That's the bounding for non English? When you put your fingers, when you put your fingers in a bounding pulse your finger will fly away from the wrist. Okay. So that's bounding. Okay. And then there's a, so much mucus in the chest, but not as much as antimony dart. There is a rattling sound. Now the key symptom is suffocation. When somebody is coughing, there is what is known as suffocation. Mm -hmm. And then when it brings out the phlegm, it is stringy and little blood stain. Stringy and little blood stain. So a bit uh, similar like Kali B? Yes, you can say. And with that, there is a lot of irritation. Lot of irritation in the nose. Lot of irritation in the nose. That is the characteristic of epicac. And then if you go further, you will see a clean tongue. They are usually not thirsty. So usually not thirsty with a clean tongue. I think so this is what you should think of a epicac. So after epicac, I am going to talk about now that there is a frank pneumonia which has come into the patient. And this is a serious condition. If you don't treat the pneumonia, then the patient will die. Especially if the patient is old, about 70 years, has a heart problem, has a diabetes, has a cancer. So I'm talking about those weak patients. And those weak patients, if they develop COVID, then on the seventh day to sixth day, they will have pneumonias. So, sorry, the, the sound was suddenly, can you repeat the last sentence? Yeah. So if the patients are weak, yes. immunologically, with some cardiac disease, kidney disease, lung disease, cancer, they will succumb to pneumonia very fast. Yes. So if you are really going to treat them with homeopathy only and not with modern medicine, then your skill should be very good. Mm -hmm. yes. Now the same, some of the remedies which I have discussed in the earlier stage of COVID can again come back over here. Remember that. So I will start with bryonia. Since many people have used bryonia and I do agree with them that there is some indications of bryonia even in a late stage. Now, late stage indications are totally different than the early stage. So what I taught you in the beginning will now not apply here. What will apply here is, and one more thing, you will get very few symptoms. So don't think you are going to get a 25, 30 symptoms. Mm -hmm. So the tongue is thick, heavy, white coating on a dry tongue. That's not on a moist tongue. So tongue is dry and then there is thick 
white, heavy coating. Mouth is dry. Bitter taste in the mouth. And wants water. Wants water. Finished. This is the first observation that you will see. But we all know Brahmi likes cold water. But if they drink cold water, they immediately get more sick. Sorry, the sentence was again uh, not clear. Yeah. So yes. you said they desire cold water. But if they drink, they will get more sick. So please be careful. If you are treating a Brahmi case, don't tell them to drink more water. Because the more they drink, the more they will fall sick. And when they fall, fall sick, you mean the general condition or not? General yeah. condition, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Then they don't want visitors. They don't want nurse. They don't want doctors. They don't want relatives. Because if you annoy them, the temperature increases. Mm -hmm. If you do something against their wish, they start coughing, they become more breathless, they develop more fever. So that mental state is very, very important not to annoy them. And what the relatives will say, oh, he is in a very bad mood today, doctor. Yes. That's the word they will use, that he is in a very bad mood. One homeopath told me he did a house visit with a lady and the lady was very aggressive, very angry towards her husband. So you stupid yes. man and you this. Yeah. Well, normally she yes. was uh, quite uh, a calm person. Yes. yes. But in hospital, the nurse usually tells us that the patient is in a bad mood. Okay. When somebody says like that, I know it's a Brownia case or Brownia can be one of the remedy. Now, most of the pneumonias that I have seen with COVID are on the right side. And Brownia has a right-sided pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Now, what I have to look over here is the general symptoms. And that is any motion aggravates. Mm -hmm. Motion of the head, motion of the body, motion of the hand. Anything to do with the motion will aggravate. Okay. And in Brownia, it is always right to left. Okay. So, the pneumonia may start in the right, but finally... It will end up in the left side. So that's very important. And they have a senior pain in the chest. That's very important. It's a severe pain in chest. Yeah. And they have to hold the chest like this with the two hands like this. Okay. Because when they cough, it hurts them the maximum. So they need a lot of pressure like this, you know. Yes. And then they have got problems with the throat. So the throat becomes uh, irritated quite a lot. They are hot patient, as I told you in the very beginning. So this is Brionia. Mm -hmm. Now, as I told you in the beginning, that after uh, Ferrumphos, the stage of phosphorus will come. Phosphorus comes like an aeroplane, jet speed, zoop. In 24 hours, full-blown picture of pneumonia comes out. So usually, it's the coal, cold wind, cold weather, exposure to coal, everything cold. And then, there is a tightness in the chest and dry cough. This is the pattern of phosphorus, cold, tightness in the chest, and then from tightness in the chest, Next day, they start coughing, which is dry. The dry cough turns into a hoarseness of voice. The hoarseness of the voice again brings the tight of death. And then he becomes breathless and he cannot breathe. This is the cycle of phosphorus. And I tell you, you will verify this very frequently. If you see this kind of pneumonias regularly in your practice. Now, as I said earlier, and I will again repeat that phosphorus basically starts with an exposure, an exposure to coal in every form, 
cold weather, cold winds, cold drinks, cold applications. Mm -hmm. And with this coldness, after a few hours, there is a sudden tightness or oppression in the chest. Mm -hmm. Usually beginning in the left side, but can go into the right side. And then there is a dry cough. This cough is again extremely painful with little hoarseness, maybe a loss of voice. And then again with the cough, the tightness comes, the operation comes. And this is a whole cycle which phosphorus person suffers for first few days. Mm -hmm. And then it directly goes into the lungs, produces inflammation of the bronchus, alveoli, small bronchioles, and then the man starts coughing. It's a very, very painful cough. Cough usually is little laryngeal. There can be little blood that comes out with that. Now, this is the phase where you have to differentiate with bryonia. Mm -hmm. Because bryonia also somewhat has a painful cough like uh, phosphorus. The difference is that the phosphorus has a flush on the face. Mm -hmm. Phosphorus is more tired and exhausted. Phosphorus is not irritable like bryonia, as we earlier said, in a bad mood. The skin is hot and moist in phosphorus, mm -hmm. where bryonia is dry. That's another very important uh, difference. Phosphorus is more drowsy, more toxic. Bryonia is still awake, still active. But Brian, as I say, are in a very bad mood. Phosphorus irritating cough, as explained to you in the early stage, has got a lot of feeling of rawness and burning in the chest, like this center area. Something very similar to spongia that you will see, that after coughing, a lot of burning and a lot of rawness and soreness in the chest. And then as the disease progresses, the tongue becomes almost whitish, yellow in color. Patient is more thirsty for cold drinks. Now we are again brown yet and come up, you know. Mm -hmm. And there is a very, very dry mouth, but no bitter taste like brownia. Brownia wants plain cold water. Phosphorus wants something juicy or something sour. So maybe a lemon squeeze in the cold water, that is what phosphorus is uh, looking at. Another thing that is very important that I have seen is the most comfortable position for phosphorus is not lying down flat, mm -hmm. but being propped up straight. Because if they lie down, they get severe difficulty in breathing and oppression freely in the chest. So that is very important. And that's why they always want to see what is known as semi-inclined. Mentally, they are a little anxious, but they want company. They want support. They want that people should come near them, sit next to them, sleep next to them then the anxiety is much better, the fear is much better and if somebody holds his hand, massages his hand, you know, gentle massage, slow massage, this is what phosphorus will love. So this is the whole picture of a phosphorus that I can tell you from my clinical experience with keynotes and differentiation. Then comes another type of pneumonia, which is very virulent. Now, in this pneumonia, you have to think of a death or a death-like situation. Huh? So, these are the virulent pneumonias. And so, the prognosis in such pneumonia is very, very bad. And the first thing that you will see in this pneumonia is that with high fever, 
percent directly goes into delirium. So this is very important. Delirium comes very early, within less than few hours. And that should be the striking point that we are talking about a remedy, Viretram Virid. Viretram Virid. And in this delirium, they see all figures on the wall, figures on the ceiling, figures in the room. So that kind of delirium that you will see. And the temperatures are usually very, very high. Veneton will never have 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The fever will go up to 103, 104, 105. So that kind of pneumonia we are talking about. And there are a lot of sweats, you know, profuse sweat. And with sweat, the temperature is very high. And sweating does not reduce the temperature. That's fact. Many remedies like Nectaramule, Bryonia, you will see when the person sweats, temperature goes down. Mm -hmm. In Veredrum, this will never happen. This will always be, remain the same. Then, the taste. Now, Bryonia has a bitter taste in the mouth with fever. Veredrum, Virid has a sweet taste. A very rarely you will hear this symptom. Huh? The sweet taste in the mouth. So whatever they drink is abnormally sweet. Whatever they eat will be abnormally sweet. And with that high fever, high temperature, good amount of thirst. And if you examine the tongue, it is a red streak which goes down the center. So from the base of the tongue to the tip of the tongue, there is a thin red streak. Uh -huh, yeah. Usually, when there is a snow, when there is a winter, veritrum vivid pneumonia usually come. And it is still so snowing in many parts of Europe, still snowing in many parts of America. So if COVID cases are there with pneumonia, I think so one should think of veritrum uh, vivid because these are the key symptoms that uh, you will see in patients. Another important thing that I have seen in uh, advanced pneumonia patients is a remedy, Chelidonium. Now, one never thinks of Chelidonium very easily in pneumonia. But Chelidonium has got a very strong characteristic and that is that these patients have total loss of appetite and a kind of discomfort in the chest which they cannot explain. Now all these remedies that you all studied with me so far can explain you. I am burning, I have this, I have constriction. Chelidonium patient cannot explain you these kinds of symptoms. What they try to explain to you is no appetite to begin with. And then, along with this no appetite to begin with, they have got liver symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now, this liver symptom is nausea and vomiting. And when you, if the patient is in hospital, if you see the blood chemistry, you will see abnormal liver function tests. Chelidonium affects the right lung. So, if you know the X-ray of the patient, you can very well see that this is a right lung of the patient which is being affected. And then you will, if you are lucky enough, you will see the fan-like motion of LNSI. So a typical fan-like motion of LNSI, what you see in lycopodium, but you should be very lucky enough to see that kind of uh, picture. Another thing that you will see in this patients who need a chelidonium is desire for very warm drinks. So desire for very warm drinks is another characteristic symptom of chelidonia, pneumonia. So this was, these are some of the situations where you will see advanced pneumonia. And the last remedy that I want to discuss with you Finally, is the sulfur. Mm -hmm. Now, sulfur, you should think as a terminal 
neglected cases where you have given many remedies, the case is not progressing further, then you should take a of sulfur. Sulfur usually will have a crack on the lower lip, you know, so that is characteristic. They can have some uh, herpetic eruptions around the lips also, so that is very important. But the guiding symptom for me in my practice is weakness in the chest like sternum metallica. Acute weakness in the chest with acute stabbing pain in the chest and cannot lie on the painful side. Sulfur patients cannot lie on painful side and in sulfur usually it is the left lung so they may not be able to lie comfortably on the left side. So, and they are very hot patient, they are very thirsty patient, the sleep is very restless, they may get some dreams, maybe some very, very fearful dreams in the sleep, and they have a copious offensive perspiration that you will see in these patients who eat this remedy. A very close friend of sulfur is natrum sulfuricum. But natrum sulfuricum is much more chilly, much more cyanotic, and much more icteric. Icteric means jaundice. So this is the main difference between sulfur and natrum sulf. And another thing is that they have got severe depression, like bryonia. So these patients are little depressed and they have got typical occipital headache. Now here in Brahmia, we had a frontal headache. Natrum self is known for occipital headache. Natrum self has got typical aggravation after midnight between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. So these are the aggravation time or maybe 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. And they get a lot of biliousness. So the sputum is like a bile, hmm? or sputum is like greenish color, yellowish color. And a fair quantity of sputum will come when they try to make an attempt to cough. So this is another remedy that I will treat in an advanced situation. Now, I would like to show you some remedy from my brother, which I have recently used it in a fairly advanced pneumonia. Now, if you, I have a lot of additions related to the rubric pneumonia in